Peace be with you. Friends, our gospel reading for today is um, one of my favorites because it's one of the most confounding. It's one I found that people really struggle with. And you know the old saying about um, where you stumble, that's where you should dig for treasure. It applies here. It's this parable that that kind of bugs us. That's where we should dig. We should really dig in. I'm talking about the parable from the 20th chapter of Matthew, dealing with the workers hired at different times of the day. Do you remember? So the man comes out and hires people at the beginning of the day, and they work in the hot sun for you know eight hours. Others he hires at noon, others at three, and still others at the very end of the day. Then the moment comes to pay them, and he pays those who had worked only an hour, he pays them the full wage. So, of course, the people hired earlier think, hey, this is great, we're going to get a lot more, but they get exactly the same. Well, what gives? This is unfair, right? So they complain. And the owner says, look, you know, are you just jealous because I'm generous? Well, people say, all right, I, I guess, but I, I kind of sympathize with those people who worked all day. Didn't they deserve more? Okay. Let me do uh, propose to you a couple stories that I think will help us get at the spiritual point here, because it's meant to bug us, this story. It's meant to bug us and make us think of it. Let me propose my own little parable. Suppose there's a, a beautiful home now that's caught fire. There are two sons in the family who are like high school age, and they're, they're home. And so immediately they get to work battling the fire. Now suppose there's a third brother, and he's, um, he's already off for work. He's away, and they have to call him or text him, and then he gets there as soon as he can, but you know, a little bit later. But he joins in the, the battle to save the house. There's a fourth brother who's older. He's on a business trip. He's out of town. He's contacted. Uh, the house is on fire. And he says, all right, I'm, I'm going to cancel my meeting. I'm going to get an earlier flight. I'm coming home. So he, he comes home, but it takes him four or five hours. He gets there. By now, you know, the firefighters are fully involved, and everyone's been working, and things are kind of under control. But he, he joins in. And then, finally, they control the fire. They save the house. Now the four brothers, imagine them sitting down on a couch, and they're exhausted, they're, they're sooty, they're sweaty, they're tired. They're just overjoyed that their beloved family home has been saved. No one's been hurt. Can you imagine for a second one of those younger brothers saying, you know, this is really bugging me. I, I mean, I worked fighting this fire all day. And and you, you come in here at the last minute. I think I deserve more credit. I mean, can you see how it would just be ludicrous? I mean, who'd be worrying at that point about credit? It's just they're so overjoyed that the house was saved, and they all had an opportunity to get into this, this process. See, my point here is, Mission has a way of concentrating the mind. See what I mean? Mission's got a way of focusing our attention on what matters. And when you're in the heat of the battle, pun intended there, I guess, you're in the heat of the battle, all these trivialities fall to the side. Like, you know, who's, who's who spent more time? Who deserves more credit? Here's the second story now. It's, it can function, I suppose, as a parable, but it's from my own, my own life. And in fact, it's one of my earliest memories. I was about three, and I was at my grandmother's house. It must have been summertime, so I'm guessing it was probably 4th of July, one of these big family gatherings. Grandma was there, all my aunts and uncles, my parents, all my cousins. You know, and I'm a little guy, and so we're all playing around and so on. And then I did what little tiny kids will often do, I just managed to wander away. I just wandered away from the house. And I remember later they told me that people would say, where's, where's Bobby? And they'd say, I, I don't know, he must be around somewhere, you know, he's upstairs. And, and someone else said, well, I, I don't know, I haven't seen him, where's, where's Bobby? I don't know, he must be with somebody, you know. Well, eventually it became clear <laughs> that Bobby wasn't there, and uh, they panicked. 
So here's the whole house full of my whole family and everybody panicked. Here's this three-year-old kid was no longer there. My parents, of course, are, are beside themselves. And they said they all went outside. It was my grandma's house. It was on the north side of Chicago. So kind of a you know urban area. And they all flooded the streets of the neighborhood looking frantically for me. Well, I had wandered away someplace. And uh, it turns out that these two teenage girls, and it's funny, I can still vaguely see them in my mind's eye, uh, had just happened to, to wander by near their house. And there I was. And they must have known me. They must have known whom I belonged to, you know. Because they picked me up, and one of them put me up on her shoulder. I still remember that. And then carried me back to my grandmother's house. Well, I, I still can see this. I remember it. When they saw me coming on the shoulders of this, of this girl, there was this rejoicing. You know, everyone said, there he is. There he is. He's back. You know, And they were so thrilled that they brought these two girls in and had sort of a celebration. They, they brought them into the house, and... Everyone celebrated. Okay. Can you imagine my parents at that point saying, you know, I, this is not fair. I mean, we spent an hour looking for this goofy kid. These, these girls just happened to walk by the house, and there he was. And so they're getting all the credit. How come we don't have a party? I mean, do you see how ludicrous that is, how ridiculous that is? In fact, everyone was so overjoyed that this this – potential tragedy had been averted and then they'd found me they didn't care who got credit who gets a bigger crown who gets a bigger party who cares because the mission had served to focus their minds right and so all this triviality fell away and it was simply a celebration Again, think of the brothers on the couch. I mean, I was worrying about who gets credit for putting the fire out. The fire's out. That's what matters. We saved the house, you know? Might, in fact, the younger brothers say, hey, we, we had the privilege of contributing mightily to this thing. I'm not looking for credit. But what a privilege it was that we were able to, you know, put our shoulder to the task and, and save the house. The mission and the urgency of the moment has a way of focusing the mind. Now, see, here's the thing, spiritually speaking. The devil loves playing this game with us. Let me just say that again. The enemy of the human race loves this game, by which I mean this distraction from what really matters. He loves to get us all preoccupied with trivia. Now, think for a second, everybody. And this is a really good point of, of spiritual meditation. Think for a second. How much time you spend, how much time I spend, on spiritual trivia? How much, how much time I waste fussing about things that don't matter at all? Like, who gets more credit? Who's, who's at, at, at the front of the line? Rather, we've been given this stunning privilege of contributing to the mission of the kingdom of God. So think of those workers again now. They're hired at different times of the day. Some are hired first time of day, and they, and they work all day. Don't see it as, oh, what a terrible burden we've had. <laughs> Rather, what a tremendous opportunity we've been given. We've been given the privilege of working for, for eight hours for this great good. Now, someone comes at the end of the day, and they've been given the privilege of working for an hour. Well, why would I complain about this? Why would this bother me? Instead, hey, we're all in the same thing here together, right? We're all about the work of the kingdom of God, and so let's let's encourage each other. Let's revel in the opportunity that we have and stop playing these trivial spiritual games. So think, you know, how much time we spend fussing about wealth? Who's wealthier? Who's got more money? Who deserves more money? Who cares? See, spiritually speaking, who cares? Why does it matter? 
or titles. Who's got the bigger title in the kingdom of God? Who cares? Look at look at our our king, the one we follow in the kingdom of God. What title did he have? What honor, what privilege? Well, think of him on the cross. How was he honored? What title did he bear? How much money did he have on the cross? The cross now helps to clarify what this game is finally about. It's about doing the work of God's kingdom. You know, I've been thinking about this recently um, as I just passed my second anniversary as a bishop just a few days ago. I've been a priest now for 31 years, so coming up on 32 years. Of course, it seems to go by like that. Do I see this as like, oh man, what a drag? I mean, all these all these years I've had to labor in the in the vineyard of the Lord. Rather, no. I mean, what a what an incomparable privilege I was given. I think of you know those same parents who who rejoiced in my return when I was three years old, who gave me the Catholic faith who gave me Catholic schooling, this wonderful example, who nurtured and encouraged my vocation, um, rejoiced when I became a priest. Um, I think of my grandmother, who was there the day I was ordained. She died not many years uh, later, but there she was when I was ordained. What a privilege they gave me. What a, what a, what a, what a wonderful opportunity to work all these years in the, in the vineyard. How silly. It would be if I were to say, you know, here's some upstart young priest coming along, and he's only been at it for a year, and and he's he's called a priest too. I mean, how ridiculous that would be, right? We're, we're both in the same game, and and I, in fact, have been given this this greater privilege of being able to work for all these years. Let's stop allowing the devil to distract us from what matters. That's my point. We got ourselves a real battle, by the way, on our hands, and I've talked about it a lot. I mean, the rise of the nuns, the N-O-N-E-S, right? The rise of those who say, I've got no religion. The number of especially young people who are, who are running away from our faith. Talk about a house on fire. Talk about a little kid lost. We got a major crisis, friends, on our hands. And see, what the devil loves to do is to distract us from that task and get us all worked up around who's number one, you know? Who cares who's number one? We're, we're all being called to this great mission, and the mission has a way of concentrating the mind and concentrating our energies spiritually. Stop worrying about who started first and who deserves more and who worked harder? Who cares? The house is on fire. Who cares? The kid is lost. We got to do something. If he's found, everybody should rejoice. If the fire is put out, everybody should be happy. Don't let the enemy of the human race distract your attention from the one thing that matters, and that's having this privilege of working in the Lord's vineyard. And God bless you.